Coping with COVID is brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Visit scdhec.gov for an updated list of testing sites and important information on how to protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. Also, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Log on to columbiasc.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Center. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples, and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their life. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, contact Agape Counseling and Training Center at agapects.com. And Columbia Housing Authority. The agency is looking for stories from former residents of Allen Benedict Court to retain some of the property's rich history. In its 80-year life, Allen Benedict Court has been home to some of the country's elite, including a Grammy Award-winning performer, corporate executives, national television celebrities, a host of doctors, lawyers, and NBA greats. So share your pictures, mementos, and memories at chcares at chasc.org. Coping with COVID, brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Columbia Housing Authority, Agape Counseling and Training Center, and Palmetto Media Connection. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Fight the spread and take a stand against coronavirus. Wear a mask in public. Stay at least six feet apart from others and get tested. Join us and fight the spread. Visit scdhack.gov slash COVID-19. Happy Saturday, and thank you so much for joining us. You are watching Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. I'm Trey Taylor, and uh, the show is brought to you by SCD Heck, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, also Palmetto Media Connections, and Agape Counseling and Training Center. Listen, if you're having some challenges coping with COVID, please contact the folks at Agape Counseling and Training Center. Well, I'm Trey Taylor, and uh, we are continuing our series of interviews of people who found success dating online. Many people People are utilizing online dating sites and social media. Everyone is not as successful. So we're talking to people who are successful and uh, we're going to have some great advice for some couples who are finding their mates online. Coming up, we're going to talk with uh, Cameron and Desiree Green. They met on Facebook. There they go right there. Hey there, Cam and Des. Hey. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, Thank you. We're looking forward to uh, talking to you. They met online on Facebook dating a little over a year, and then they married. They have a beautiful child, and we're going to hear their story coming up next on Coping with COVID. If you guys can uh, put your phone or whatever the device you're on in um, horizontal, we'll be right back with you, okay? There you go. Great. Yeah. Now we can see you much better now. We'll be right yeah. back with uh, Cameron and Desiree next on Coping with COVID. But first, your COVID community updates. The busiest shopping day of the year wasn't yesterday, as most Black Friday shoppers nationwide went online instead of in line. Those who did go to the malls were masked and met with sanitizing stations and actually said they were glad the crowds were so thin. Meanwhile, experts sphere numbers will go up next week since most people did not follow CDC suggestions to stay home. They say the numbers typically rise each holiday since the pandemic began. The Columbia VA is one of 17 facilities nationwide participating in the COVID vaccine trials. They're looking for veterans over 18 in good, stable health. And because of the impact the virus has had in minority communities, they especially need African-Americans, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Volunteers will be paid for their time and travel. And for more information, visit columbiasc.va.gov. And today is Small Business Saturday, and with many that were hit, local businesses have taken, with the hits local businesses have taken due to COVID, the South Carolina Department of Commerce is urging communities not to forget to patronize locally owned shops while you're doing your holiday shopping. SED Heck has the most up-to-date list of uh, times, dates, and location for COVID testing in and around South Carolina. Visit scdheck.gov for more information on COVID testing in South Carolina. Also, check the scroll at the bottom of the screen for information on organizing a COVID screening at your event or in your neighborhood. Plus, the DHEC care line is available now. 
On the care line, you'll find information on testing and transportation to get a test. Also, SCD Hack is uh, actually doing free HIV testing on December 1st, which is World AIDS Day. The event is open to anyone who would like to get tested for HIV, STDs, and hepatitis 3. There is also a World AIDS Day Facebook Live event on Ending the Epidemic Facebook page. For more information on the statewide testing locations, call 1-800-322-2437 or visit scdheck.gov backslash World AIDS Day. Richland County paramedics are also offering in-person COVID screening. Uh, if you live in uh, Richland or uh, Clarendon County, call 911 for information. And the South Carolina Bar Association at SC Legal Services are offering a free toll-free number and website for rental and mortgage help. The City of Columbia uh, continues to offer their six-month payment plan for water bills and payment assistance up to 75% for those who need it. And if you need some help with virtual learning and virtual schooling, visit Rashonda Pratt's YouTube page. Page. She has actually dedicated an entire YouTube page for information to help you learn and work virtually. I'm Trey Taylor, and you're watching Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. As I said, it's brought to you by SCD Heck, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, also uh, Palmetto Media Connections and Agape Counseling and Training Center. If you are having some challenges coping with COVID, please contact the folks at Agape Counseling and Training Center. Uh, the TaylorMade Production Facebook page is the home of Coping with COVID. Would you go over there and hit like and follow? Not only can you watch Coping with COVID Monday through Saturday at 2 p.m. You can get all of your COVID-related updates. We're also uh, streaming live on YouTube. Want to say hi to everyone that's joined us on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us. And please go over there and hit the subscribe button. One more thing. We're also on Instagram. So please check us out on Instagram. Now on Wednesday, we have a uh, collaboration with uh, SCD Hack In It Together and the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council, where we also stream live on their In It Together page. Don't forget to join us every Wednesday for Wellness Wednesday. Well, you are watching Coping with COVID. I'm Trey Taylor. Updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. Cameron and Desiree Green are one of many people who went online to find a mate and they found success, a spouse, and recently, a beautiful little baby. We're talking to them today to find out how and why they were successful dating online. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. So first of all, I want to know a little bit about your background. What was your kind of status before you guys met and married? Desiree, ladies first. <laughs> Cameron looked at you like... <laughs> He looked at you like he's getting ready to hear something for the first time, girl. <laughs> um, I really, um, I had a standard of like, I like tough guys. So like street guys. Wow. Like you like thugs. <laughs> so had, had, how had you, have you ever been married? Did you talk to me? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> Yes and no. I had oh. gotten an annulment in like 30 days. So. Oh, okay. So you said, okay, so you were married, and but but had it annulled. So you were married for about 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's one of those Britney Spears marriages. You know? Oh, it's, was it one of those? Wow, <laughs> yes. wow. And and you had, you have children, right? You have two children. Yes. Okay. And um, how long had it been since you had stopped dating? How long had it been that you had dated anybody before you met Cam? Uh, <laughs> Why are you thinking about that, Desiree? Let me, ask, let me ask Cam. Cam, now you had been married previously, right? Right. I was married. I was married for almost seven years okay uh, to to my ex-wife um before i met this i was um going on right around a year of my divorce oh, okay all right and then and you have a you have a child i do me and my ex-wife we have two children together um then i have of course uh the baby with desiree and right, uh, right. we're now expecting again so we're excited oh wow how old is the baby the baby is three months 
Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. All right. So now you guys met last August, right? Correct. Yes. And then and then you then you met in person actually in November. Now tell me about why you decided to opt for online dating. Had you dated online before? I had. That's, I don't know. I don't know if she had. I, 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 I've dated online before. I have, but it was on plenty of fish. And like okay. the dudes, they were like weird. Then I tried like another dating site, and then like the dates I were getting, they were like not my type. Not your type. So like I quit. But then I seen Facebook dating, and then I was like, oh, this might be kind of nice. Okay, so Cam, other than Facebook dating, had you done some online sites also? I did. I did some other online sites with, um, like, within the Christian community uh, that was important, and um, and so I, I tried those out, and I, I had success on those. I would say, um, obviously, not marital success like what right. I have now, but you know, um, I met women and we dated, and you know, there was stints where you know we were in relationship or. You know what? What will you have it? And so it was. It was interesting. <laughs> Facebook dating, I think, just provided um, like an additional level of getting to know somebody because you could find out like if you had mutual friends in common. Right. So asking around and like you could find out if it was a real page or a fake page, and you know, and all that other stuff in between. So it just provided like a little bit more of a comfort zone. You know, where yeah. you could like. You know, you can go back and go get on somebody's page and sort of scroll through their timeline, and, you know, and sort of get a feel for them that way uh, without just having to rely on what they said. Yeah, that's such a great point, Cam, because you're right. There's so many um, dating sites, but with Facebook dating, as you said, you have an instant connection to really that person's background. Right. You know, you can write, you can go right there and kind of, like you said, kind of scroll through and uh, found out. So how long had you been on Facebook dating before you saw Des? Um, I think a day. Really? I think a day. She was one of my first matches. So, and, and Desiree, how long had you been on before you saw Cam? Are you serious? Wow. So now I've never been on Facebook dating. So you said she was one of your matches. So is Facebook dating. I mean, and I've seen a lot of social media sites, but so with Facebook dating and, and let's kind of update people with Facebook dating, you go in and kind of put what you like, what you don't like, you know, kind of, and then they actually send you some people. Right. Um, okay. they, they, they send you suggested matches in which you can, you know, like everything else, swipe right What's or swipe near you, left. like location-wise. Right. Now, was location important to you? Because you're in Winston-Salem, you're in North Carolina now. Right. I was in um, I was in Durham. She was in Fayetteville. Okay. Um, so it wasn't too far, but it's still like a good hour and a half. Yeah. Um, honestly, I was looking for um, I was looking for women who were a lot closer. Um, to like Chapel Hill, Raleigh, Durham area. Yeah. So I wasn't having to drive so far. Um, so far. Actually, I think the first time we actually met when we met um, around this time last year was the day after Thanksgiving um, when we first met. And so she actually came to Durham. Uh, so I didn't have to drive the hour and a half. Right. We're talking to Cameron and uh, Desiree. They met on social media, on Facebook dating and married. And we're talking about folks who have success dating online. And we're doing this series because a lot of people are saying they're not having success. They hear a lot of they don't know what to say, when to say it, how to say it. They find a lot of fake profiles. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. But Desiree, I want to ask you, you said that you are typically attracted to um I, I don't know how to say it nicely. Roughnecks. <laughs> I don't know how to say it nicely. But um, so, what was it about Cam that attracted you? Because he's not that. He doesn't appear to be. Now he might be on a down low, girl. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I don't mean like he might be on the down low. I, I, he might I, be I, a I, roughneck I, on the down. Either <laughs> yeah. way, it was a no. Right. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Look, she's looking at you like maybe you are, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm no thug. 
that down low. Uh, see, right, that clarify. down low. Right, come on, Dad. <laughs> Catch um, up to the conversation, Dad. <laughs> so what was it about him? Because he is, um, aren't you a, de a deacon or a minister or something like that in your church? I'm, a, I'm an elder in the local, my local ministry. Um, I've been preaching for 12 years now, so I've been in the game since I was right. 18. Yeah. So, Desiree, what was it about Cameron? I mean, he's totally different than what you say you've been attracted to in the past. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess it. I guess it was his way of speaking. Like <clears throat> he didn't come off, you know, rude. Right. Uh, he was like real, real nice and genuine. And I asked my grandma. I was like, he said he's a preacher. And she was like, maybe that's what you need, because you need yeah. these. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your grandma would tell you need Jesus. <laughs> well, but listen, listen. It, it's so funny you mentioned that because I just saw a post online and it was pursue dating or one of those one of those sites that are on Facebook. They're not Facebook dating. And it was a guy that posted that um that he had been told by his father that he was dating the wrong types of women, you know, and that he should probably date someone else. And so his question to everyone else was, do y'all parents tell y'all something? But what I asked him was, what do you think about what your dad said? You know, so when your grandmother said that, did you think you're being nosy grandma or did you think, hmm, maybe she has a point? Because no, it's hard sometimes for us to take advice from our elders. No, I would never call my grandma nosy because... Um, right. <laughs> oh, you may not tell it to your face, but you would probably tell it. I go to for everything. Like, my right. dirty little secrets or whatever, my grandma got all, all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I oh, know, that's good. Everything I say is safe for my grandma. So, you know, I listen to my grandma sometimes, not all the time. And sometimes yeah. I did make, you know, bad decisions because I, I was in a very, very, very bad relationship. Right, saying, right. Like, violence. So I just sat down and listened to my grandma, and she was like, "Hey, maybe a good guy is what you need because you don't yeah. want to continue to be treated any type of way." And blah blah blah. blah. So I listened. Yeah, here I am. yeah, and here you are, married, a baby, and a baby on the way. <laughs> yeah. So who reached out first? So you said it was connected. Uh, you you know they told you, and so wh what happened? Who who could, he he contacted you yeah. first? Cam, Cam said hello to me first. Okay, all right. And when you first saw him again, you you said he was oh you you know you said you know he's attractive, but he's but he's nice. And so before your grandmother said something, did the red flags come out? He's too nice. Maybe he's corny. You know what I mean? Because sometimes I think um, we as women. I did think he was going to be like a corny dude. I was like, yeah, like I have to meet him first because like he might be like mad weird. Like, right. I mean, but he was corny when I met him. He was actually kind of, you know, um, he kind of cool, girl. He got a little swag to him, I think. Don't you think so? Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, I thought he was going to be like a, one of those preachers, like, hi, darling, how you doing? Like, hey, you know, what's up? <laughs> Desiree and uh, Cam join us from North Carolina. They met on social media. Rod Brand says, amazing story. Congratulations. I think Ron and his wife, uh, they live in Columbia. They met on uh, Plenty of Fish. So you guys reached out. How long was it uh, did you converse before you kind of picked up the phone? How, how long did you guys kind of converse online? Um, I think maybe like a week before we actually like exchanged phone numbers. Okay. Okay. So, and you said, um, Des came and visited you. Yeah. She came and visited me in November. So how was that first date, Cam? It was interesting. She, um, <laughs> she got lost. We had agreed, um, that we were going to meet and carry, um, and she had gotten, she had gotten lost. I don't know where she ended up, but it was like, like 45 minutes away from where she was supposed to be. <laughs> My parents right. And so I had oh, to go. And, okay. Um, I had to go and find her. And so of course, by the time I found her, 
we got back to where we were going, like the reservation was null and like everything was just, <laughs> you know, so we had to just, you know, improvise. And so we really just sat around and just talked um, for like the remainder of the night and just, you know, got to know each other on a more, on a more personal level since we got to meet like, you know, face to face. Cause I had some questions about her that I just was not, was not 100% sure of yet. <laughs> and so we had to, we had to like get those out in the open. Now, was that because of the conversation you and she had had? Uh, no, it was just because, you know, hey, like, uh, no. You know, <laughs> Desiree, let us, let us tell. Because listen, Not you guys are married people. now. It's when too many you, people for what he's getting when, ready to say. <laughs> you don't know what I'm getting ready to say. When you, are, when you are online, you know, a lot of people are getting catfished these days. Yes, you know, yes. It's, it's, and catfish is a real thing. And so, like, right. I didn't know if she was real, not real. Because for a long time, we would talk on the phone, but, like, we never video chatted. You know, and I always oh. thought, like, that was weird. So I was like, am I being catfished right now? Yeah, you know, yeah. And then I would, like, go look at her pictures, and, like, I, I couldn't really tell, like, if she was, like, like a real woman or not. Oh, you know? my God. Like, you know, you know, you got to check for like the Athens app. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just want to be sure. And so, you know, we sat down. And had You're time. right, like, though. Like, You're so, right, though. It's like, first thing first. So are you or were you ever a man? You know, right. get that out, out of the way. Uh, so once we, cleared, once we cleared that, everything else just sort of, just sort of flowed naturally. Right. Mitchell Peace Joy Jen says, um, congratulations. Thanks for sharing. Uh, she wants to know how do you plan on keeping your marriage strong? And I want to ask that, but I want to get to the story first. Daniel Lake says, uh, I love your story. I guess there's hope for me. Hey, Daniel, thank you so much for watching. Listen, that's why we're doing these shows about people dating online. One, because there is hope and you can have a connection, even though you know, you hear a lot of people say they're not having success. And the other thing is singles are the largest population. There are more single people than there are married people. So that means people are out there and there's a problem with people connecting. And for years, I, um, you know, traveled around with uh, Black Expo doing singles events. And I even had a singles podcast for a while because I'm so passionate about the plight of singles. And, you know, you know, Cam, you're a man of God. God wants us to be together. He wants us to find our mate. But there's such a disconnection between men and women. We're just, we're doing this. You know, we just don't speak the same language. And there's something that is really um, forcing us from connecting. So I'm doing these stories so that stories like yours, like Cam and like yours and Des, you can show people that there is hope, you know, like Danielle said, and what to do and what not to do. So thank you again so much for uh, joining us. Uh, so we're talking to Cam and Dez. They live in North Carolina. They met on Facebook uh, dating and uh, got together after a year. And uh, now they're married, got a baby and a baby on the way. And uh, and they're doing really good. So here's the question. Desiree, you said no. Y'all not doing good? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> what, what was no? What's happening? <laughs> we're doing good. It's just the baby on the way. It's just my mind is just. Yeah, I, it yeah, was girl. It was I was gonna quick. say, me too, girl. I'm not. I don't have a. <laughs> it was real me quick. Too. Yeah, but listen, y'all doing what married people do, obviously. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you having a ba you having another baby, girl. <laughs> but listen, you're legit. You're married, and and you got a man of God, a good. So, do you believe though, Des, that he's going to take care of you and the children? Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. really do believe it. Yeah. So you good, girl. You you good if you get pregnant again in three months. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so I want to know this. So you dated off and on before finally deciding you wanted to be together. First, what was the dating off and on? And Desiree, you you um covering the camera. What why did you guys what was what's going on that you dated off and on? For a while, Cam kept saying that we weren't compatible because I was, I'm was i young. He's older than me. He was in the church. He's in the church. I wasn't in the church like that. Like, I would go to church, 
every now and yeah. then, like yeah. Easter, Christmas, stuff like that. <laughs> I ain't go to church. Um, <laughs> I was still like, you know, doing my youth activities, drinking, yeah. blah, 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 hanging out with my friends and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, we just weren't compatible. And um, we, we still somewhat not compatible now on some things. Right. But as he teaches me a lot of stuff, and if I listen to it, which I really should listen to it, because every time I don't listen, I get myself into something that I can't get right. myself out. Right, right. So, like, the stuff that he teaches me, like, if I listen, then, like, you know, it, it's it starts to make us compatible, so... Yeah. Well, so, so Desiree, let's find out why, when, what is it going to take for you to trust him enough to listen to what he's telling you? If you love him, you love him and you trust him because you told me you trust him to take care of your family. Right. Mm -hmm. And he is your husband. So, and you just said, you know, that what you've seen for yourself, not because somebody told you, but you've seen for yourself, some of the things he said to you, came out right so when are you going to kind of start listening and not have to experience everything why when are you gonna stop having to touch the hot stove um i'm gonna listen you know <laughs> i'm not and gonna, here's the thing i'm not Let gonna say every time um, my decision is gonna be what my decision is supposed to be but like you know what i'm saying um I'm going to listen because <laughs> he's my husband, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I can't right. just like maneuver right. like it's just me anymore. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's And it's not only you, it's you and your other two children and these two children, the, the one that you, well, the three children and then the two, the one that you have on the way. And I know you want what's best for, for your children, you know? So, and, and you're married now. So you kind of got to, you know, you got to shift, you got to shift and, and you, you know, leave one life behind and move forward with another life that you've chosen, which is a good life. I, I believe for you. And I've just, you know, known you just these few minutes. And I believe just from what you've shared that uh, Cam is, is, is providing and will provide an even better life. You just have to uh, grow in the marriage and recognize you have a husband. You talk to your grandma. What's your grandma was saying? She loves him. <laughs> of course she does. If I, call, if I call her right now, she's going to be like, where my son at? I'm going to talk to you. Where my son? So. Yeah. And you you told me you trust your grandma. So, um, and like I said, you don't know me, but listen, I just met, I, and I couldn't be your grandma, but you know. So how old are you? How, what's the age difference? Seven years. Seven years. That's not. It's not huge. It's not huge. Uh, Rod Branch wanted to know how long um, you. Uh, how long had after meeting did they get married? It was about a year, right? It was right out a year. We're looking yeah. for fifteen months shy of a year. We got married in October, um, so right at a month. It was a month. A month shy of a year that we got. Yeah. Married. Yeah. Thank you, Rod, for uh, your question. All right. So. So you thought. So you said. You guys weren't sure if you were compatible, or, or Cam didn't think so. Did you think yeah. you were compatible? So you said Cam didn't, but did you? <sighs> no, honestly, you no. Did. You did. But like, um, I always just was when he said that I was pregnant. So like, um, like we stopped talking for a while because I went ghost. But then I came back. And then we started talking again, but we were talking heavier this time because this is the right time kind of I was pregnant. Yeah. And, um, he just kept saying we weren't compatible. We weren't compatible. Maybe we need to co-parent because we're just not going to like do good in a relationship. And me being pregnant with my hormones, I was like, <laughs> what? Blah, 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 blah. He was like, no, chill. You're taking it the wrong way. And I was like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> going off at the mouth. <laughs> So, how did you decide that you should get married? After not thinking that you were compatible, and I was going to ask, was it the baby? So, so what made you? Because you could have co-parented, as you say, Cameron. You know, because he's co-parenting now. So, yeah. what made what made you decide 
you know, I'm gonna just go for it. Um, so so after the baby got here, um, Des and I started spending a lot more time together. Right. Uh, than than what we had. Like even without the baby, where it was just like us, we spent some some us time together. Um, um, but I think the key was one day um, I lost my um, I lost my little sister. She um, oh, got so a brain aneurysm in, in September, um, and so for a few months I was like having a real hard time there and whatnot. One day I drove down. Um, it was like two o'clock in the morning, and I have a friend that uh, works at a hotel, and I was like, "Man, I'm coming to see you. I'm just coming to talk to you." And so we we sat, we were talking, and we were eating, and I was. Um, I was telling them about Desiree and why I thought we were not compatible. Um, you know, just, you know, I was like, you know, I said, she ain't no church girl. She ain't no first lady. I said, this is not going to work. You know, and, and he said something so profound that just made everything click. And I'll never forget it because he said, he said, Cam, that's your problem. He said, you keep looking for a first lady. You need to be looking for a wife. Mm, wow. You know, and so when he said that, it just like, I don't know, everything just sort of clicked because, you know, there was a lot of truth in that one statement. You can always, yeah. you know, if you find a wife, she's going to support whatever it is that you do. So if you do right. ministry, she's going to fall into that role of ministry. Whatever you do, she'll support. But if you're out here trying to find a first lady, you may find one, but you might not find a wife. Exactly. Um, you might not find exactly. a person. You just find somebody that will support you in ministry, but not support you at home. And so you need somebody that's going to support you all the way around. Um, and so when he said that, everything just clicked. And that's when I knew. And I think we probably got married maybe a month after he, he made that statement. And really? the way Cam proposed was uh, kind of uh, weird because he was going through his little um, his little battles. I'm not going to put right. it out there. But he was like real depressed. And um, he was just like he didn't want to wait another day. Wait, he didn't want to wake up another day without being married to me. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, what you talking about? He was like, <laughs> we're going to go get married. Like, next week we could just go get married. And blah, right. Blah, blah. And I was like, huh? You for real? You playing? And and so, all right, so, and, and you said something, and it, you're right, what the brother said was pr profound. And this makes me think, so, and, and I'll say this to single people, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? I think that's key right there. What are you looking for? Are you looking for a girlfriend? Are you looking for a hookup? Are you looking for a boyfriend? Are you looking for a wife? Are you looking for a husband? You know, what are you looking for? And I think that's key in figuring out why are you online dating? What are you dating? What are you looking for? So, Des, I have to ask you, what were you looking for when you started dating online? Do you know? Here's the question, because here's, here's what I found out. Again, years of working with single people. Hell, I found this out years of working on me. I had to figure out what do I want, you know, and who am I? Who am I? What are my personality traits and what personality traits do will match with mine? Not just is he cute, not just does he have a nice body, not just does he have a good job, but if I am high strung, which I am, do I need to be dating a man that's high strung too? Do I need somebody that's a little more calm? Those kind of things. I'm going to tell you, Des, when I started having those conversations with myself, because so many times I think, and I can't speak for a man because I've never been a man. I don't have an Adam's apple, <laughs> you know. So, <laughs> but as women, I don't think we think enough about like like you planning for your job or your, for your career, what are my personality traits and what personality traits do I need? Maybe not even what I want, but what do I need to move forward? Um, I think I was just looking for somebody who um, would accept my kids that I already had. Yeah. Which, I mean, they don't have to be um, they don't have to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't gotta be their dad. Like yeah. this the risk keep them. Um then I think that I was looking for a nice dude like who would take me on dates so I can know what that feels like. Even though me. you were skeptical when you found a nice dude, you knew you wanted a nice guy. 
that's yeah. interesting. Even even down to like tell me I'm beautiful, even when yeah. I feel like I'm not, because I yeah. like, had low esteem. So I mean, I know my dad would tell me, "Yo, you my cutie pie," but like yeah. to hear a man say it, that's yes. what I was looking for. Yeah, and like somebody who would like treat me as I'm supposed to be treated. Yes. Yes, yes. We're talking to Cam and Desiree. We're going to come back and uh, talk with them some more. Um, I, I do want to get uh, Mitchell Peace Joy Jen's question, and she wanted to know how you guys are keeping your marriage strong. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about how they, uh, how Cam proposed. Desiree wants to uh, tell us that story and uh, how and why they got married so quickly. And then we're going to get some of their suggestions and advice for other couples that are dating online. I want to say hi to Angela Carr Patterson. Thank you, beautiful, so much for watching. Uh, Danielle Lake says, uh, that's important. What do we need rather than what we want? Danielle, that's so important. And those are things that we do not ask ourselves. Centrell Thompson says, good conversation. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please post and share this out so we can get to the message to the masses. And uh, we're going to come right back with Cameron and Desiree Green. They met on Facebook dating. And after a little after a year, they got married. They've got a baby. And close your ears, Desiree. They got a baby on the way. <laughs> We're going to find out <laughs> what worked for them. Coming up next on Coping with COVID, I'm Trey Taylor. Coping with COVID is brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Visit scdhec.gov for an updated list of testing sites and important information on how to protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. Also, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Log on to columbiasc.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Center. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their life. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, contact Agape Counseling and Training Center at agapects.com and Columbia Housing Authority. The agency is looking for stories from former residents of Allen Benedict Court to retain some of the property's rich history. In its 80-year life, Allen Benedict Benedict Court has been home to some of the country's elite, including a Grammy Award-winning performer, corporate executives, national television celebrities, a host of doctors, lawyers, and NBA greats. So share your pictures, mementos, and memories at chcares at chasc.org. Coping with COVID, brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Columbia Housing Authority, Agape Counseling and Training Center, and Palmetto. Media Connection. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Palmetto Media Connections, connecting media and communities together. Established in 2010 with past national media guests like Janice Huff, Mitch Faulkner, and Dolores Washington, and local celebs like Cynthia Hardy, Miranda Parnell, Vaughn Gaskin, Kevin Cohen, Vanzel Hare, and Makita Pearson, and hosted by Darcy Strickland and Tony G. Palmetto Media Connections in the past has distributed to the community over $1,000 in gift cards. Connect with us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Palmetto Media Connections. Connect the media and communities together. People will be able to look 100 years now. They will know how we got over. This makes it even more important that we shine this light. Part of it also wasn't the fact that we couldn't have the physical graduation, but I also couldn't celebrate with my family out of town. For me, I feel like this is a new normal. I, this is not going in a, away anytime soon, I don't think. Anything that's happened before can happen again. And the same thing is at play with this virus. You know, we are no longer in a building, and we've talked about church being, you know, with us, in us. Have you traveled abroad late in the past six months? You know, we were trying to trace it back as early as November. You're watching Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. Good Saturday afternoon to you. I'm Trey Taylor. And uh, today we're talking to Cameron and Desiree Green. They're in North Carolina. They join us today to talk about having a successful stint 
dating online. They know all about it because they met on Facebook dating. And after a year and a couple of months, they married and now have a child and a child on the way and a great marriage. Cameron and uh, Desiree are uh, back with us. Uh, and uh, boys, there's Cam. I guess Des is going to come back in a little bit. Thank you guys so much again, so much for joining us. We appreciate it, <laughs> Cameron. So, um, so Cam, uh, you know, and, and I'll ask you now that you're here, you said after you and your friend uh, talked and he said, are you looking for a first lady or a wife? Were you thinking that you could, Desiree could be your, even even with the, with the differences, because as she said, she wasn't a church girl, so to speak. And you were looking for a church girl to be your first lady, but, but you saw wife qualities in her. Is that I correct? I did. Yeah. Yeah. And what were your what do you what were you thinking at that time before you proposed about her then fulfilling that church role that you wanted for the person? Because here's the thing. It's OK for you to think. I think it's OK for you to feel like the person you want has to have some church ties because church is important to you. Yeah, church. Um, church is definitely important to me. And I knew um, that. Um, and and I told a friend this, and, and and she corrected me when I said it. So 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 y'all don't take offense to it because I corrected myself when I said it. But when I first said, it, I said I really feel like Desiree is trainable, and she was like, she ain't no dog, but you right, mean trainable. Right. And I was like, let me let me retract yeah. that statement. <laughs> I, moldable. I feel moldable. Like she can yeah. Be, um, you know, there's certain things that I can influence her um to to learn about the culture of church and how we and how we do because i'm not denominational right so we're not traditional we don't do everything in the traditional sense and so it's really just more so of uh, you know when to do what and how yeah. to do what and yeah. i felt like i had the ability to impress those things upon her and we we we've slowly we've been married now for a little over a month so uh, and we we slowly gotten there to where, you know, she she's picking up some things along the way. And, I go to church uh, every Sunday. Yeah, All we, right we, now. We, 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 I, ain't, I, I ain't never did that. You know, I even took her to an afternoon service. You know? And I, I used to, I, 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 you know, I used Look. to go to church as a, as a child. I used to, my grandma used to have me in church all the time. But when I turned into an adult, like 18, yeah. like, I ain't going to church because I got to. Desiree, are you wearing a church hat? <laughs> Not yet. He be trying to get me some. We've tried on a few. Des, there's some fly hats out there, girl. You can rock a fly hat. I'm a, I'm I'm a hat a, girl. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a do a fly outfit. That's right. Christmas time. Right. You, walk, you do a fly hat. Put, wear a turtleneck, girl. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, work, Rocky can work a fly hat. You can rock a fly hat, girl. I love a fly hat. No. I love a fly hat. <laughs> yeah. We're talking to Cam and Desiree. Um, Mitchell Peace Joy Jen wants to know, how uh, do you plan on keeping your marriage strong? I mean, it's a month in, you know, you're, you're brand new. So what are your plans for that? And I'll even double uh, back on that and say, are you planning to do marriage counseling? Yes. Um, we're going to do post-marital counseling since we haven't did the pre. Yeah. Which we should have did the pre. Like, you know, <laughs> we have our differences, but we're all right. What you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have our differences, but we all right. We just gotta learn how to um I would say cope with different type things. Cause some stuff I might do he don't like and some stuff I do that he don't like. So compromise, you have to learn to compromise. Is yeah, that too. Yeah. Um open communication has been big for me and it's been big as of lately um, i'm still learning um how to say things and how to word things one of the yeah. things that i knew was that with the with the age gap that we have a lot of times i say things and i, I come off as a father figure where, right, you know, right. Really to come off as a husband so i'm still trying to work on that but definitely the open communication and just you know um, like, and, and I try to tell her like immediately, like when something bothers me, that's good. I don't feel like something happened the way it should have. I try to let her know immediately. I try not to wait until I feel like the longer you wait, you allow things to sort of fester. To fester. Yeah. What it is. You know, just as soon as it happens, let's talk about it. Let's get it out there. 
this is how I feel about the situation. This is what I feel like could have been done differently. And then give her the opportunity to agree or disagree and come back how she chooses to come back. Do you appreciate that about him, Des? Yes. When he comes off as a husband and I like the daddy. Yeah. 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 But do you appreciate the fact that he can come back to you and say, listen, my bad. You know, I didn't mean it that way. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because communication is the key. And he, you know, y'all are just you're trying to figure it out. You know, you're just right. trying to figure it out. And I think if you come from a point of we love each other, we want to make this work, then you'll be more open to hearing what each other has to say. And, you know, just to be able to, to be man enough, girl, that he can say to you, I'm sorry. That's huge. That's huge. You know, Marvel Williams Mendehall says a good information communication is key. Central Thompson wants to know, Cam, what have you learned from Des? I've learned patience. Patience is a virtue with Desiree. Right. Desiree, um, she has moments where she can be very hot headed. Um, <laughs> but she just, you know, she no matter. I can know that I know that I know that I'm right. 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 And in her mind, I'm just not right. Uh, <laughs> and so I've had to learn. I've had to learn real patience. Yeah. Um, which is not a bad thing because you know it helps in everyday life. It helps yeah. just having that extra patience. I know that like if I don't get pushed to the limits by her, then you know I'm I'm better off not allowing other people to push me to limits as well. And so she has taught me true patience, and I can That's I can good. respect her for that. I taught you something else too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we maybe we taught each other. I'm that. done. Yeah. No, what you talking about? I'm talking about like laughter. Like, okay, if you have no laughter in your marriage, yes, your marriage is like always serious. That's like a right. So you taught him how to be. But I play too much. Right. <laughs> um, Daniel Lake says um, she likes how Desiree is open about how she's growing into her roles in the marriage. She says, congratulations to you both in your marriage and openness about working through your differences. Daniel, thank you so much for joining us. We're talking to uh, Cameron and uh, Desiree. They met and married and a little over a year uh, on Facebook dating. Uh, we're probably going to go a little bit over the hour, if that's okay with you guys. I really want to get to, uh, I know Desiree wanted to share how, um, uh, how the proposal went. And then we, I really want to get some advice uh, that you can share with other people as far as online dating. So Desiree, so um, he came to you and said he wanted to get married like tomorrow. <laughs> oh, are they frozen? <laughs> well, we were, I was living in Fayetteville and he was in Chapel Hill, but we were like, in, but we in the process of moving to our house next month. So um, he was texting me and I was texting him, but he was like real depressed. And like, I was trying to get him out of his depressive state, you know, just talking to him. And he was like, he didn't want to wait another minute without marrying me. So I was like, you playing or are you for real? I don't have to do that if you don't want to. Right. And then, you know, um, like the next week, the next week I was supposed to get my marriage license. And I had um, lost my social security card and lost my ID. <laughs> then I found my ID, but I still lost my social security cards. So I had to find out what type of document I could use. Right, right. Um, eventually, it happened. I went and got our marriage license, and then we got married that, that Thursday. Um, mm. uh, it was awesome. It was late to my wedding, but it was great. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, Cam. so Cam, after talking to your friend, why was it important for you to do it so quickly? Why, what was it that made you feel like I, I got to do it now? You, you know, I, I've always been a very spontaneous person. Um, I've always been one to just like dance to the beat of my own drum. Yeah. Um, and so with that, like when I decided that like she was the one, I didn't feel the need to wait. 
Yeah. Um, you know, I know that I could have went long and had this whole elaborate wedding. But one thing about being married before is that I, I was determined I didn't want a big wedding again. I didn't want to spend all that money on a wedding again. Um, I just wanted it, you know, I just wanted it to be done and get it out there and be together so that we can start focusing on the bigger things that on the marriage to yeah together. um yeah so, yeah did, yeah. did you so did just, you think desiree would wedding. want a big marriage did you think desiree i'm sorry did you think desiree would want a big wedding we had talked about okay no because um in the year in october for our anniversary we we we're, we're going to do like a like a dinner Party, oh, that's nice. You know, anniversary yeah. thing. But like a big wedding, a big wedding, you know, kind of considered taken away from like the kids' Christmas and blah, blah, blah. And I, I yes. And budget and that. And we just didn't care. We wanted it to be just us anyway. So that's good. That's a very, that's very, that's a very mature outlook. I agree. I think so many people focus on that day, on the wedding and not the marriage, you know? So. Cameron and Desiree uh, joined us from North Carolina. They uh, had some successful, uh, they had success dating online. So do you, do you guys know other people that are dating online? Do you guys know other, have other friends I or know, people that you I know? I know quite a few people that. Yeah. What are you hearing that they're saying? There's a little bit of a delay, but what are you hearing that they're saying? What are you hearing that they're saying, Cam? Um, yeah, we have here that um, that you know it's, it's working out. I think uh, you know they're, they're saying there's challenges there, which I can which I can attest to. There's definitely challenges with dating um, online, but for the most part, they're having great success. What would you say? And I want this from both of you, as a man, Cam. What what do you think some things that men can do to have a better online dating experience? Um, I, I, from my experience, I would say date one woman at a time. Just one at a time. Uh, you know, I don't think it's beneficial. One of the things that I did um, prior to like choosing the one is that I dated multiple women at, at the same time. Um, you know, granted, there was no relationship. Like, I would get confused on who I was supposed to go on a date with, when, who, like, what. <laughs> I would start getting... You know, like uh, you told you're me trying to juggle. Color, I'm giving you the other girl's favorite color. Yeah, yeah choose one at a time. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, Desiree? Are some things that women should do to have a better online dating experience? Do you, do you think that maybe they should give people a chance that may not be what they think they want, that may be outside of what they typically date? That, that, that and, you know, keep your goods to yourself. <laughs> Just be giving your goods out. Just wait. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, when do you think it, is the like, best time to... Right. <laughs> What about how to reach out? I, I read a lot of people saying, people come in my DM, talk about different things. I mean, how, how, I mean, and I they say, well, how else are they going to reach you if they don't come into your inbox? What, what do you think about that? What's the best way or the best approach that you think? On a woman, it depends on like what you got on, for real, for real. Like, I can have on a crop top and some leggings. And be poking my butt out and then a dude hopping my head. I was like, yo, what's up, mom? You know, that's not the type of response I was looking for because I'm on a dating site, but what do you expect me to do like that? So I was right. like, you know, wow. take appropriate pictures so you can get appropriate uh, answers. Yeah, I love that. That's a great idea. Bring, you know, put out several different types of pictures so it doesn't look like you are looking at one thing. And you know what, Desiree? I mean, what you're saying is so true, but it's so controversial because we hear, as you know, women say, well, just because I'm dressed like this doesn't mean boom, boom, boom. But but Cameron, does it say something? 
to a man if he sees a woman dressed suggestively? Yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think they do. Yeah. So, um, yeah. We no, get no. It's saying, really you know, regardless of what the, what you think. Right. We're talking to Cameron to and uh, right. Central Thompson says uh, you two are setting a good example of the importance of agreement, which is key for living in peace together. Central, thank you so much for watching. We've got a kind of a bad connection. It's getting real choppy. I want to continue the conversation, but uh, people are saying it's hard to hear you guys. So I would love, love, love to have you back on so that we can continue the conversation. I don't know why you know, internet is what it is. So, but thank you, Cameron and Desiree so much for uh, joining us, Cam. Thank you so much. I know that you have a, a catering company. Uh, we want to put up uh, the logo for your catering company, Triple C Catering Company. So if you are in the North Carolina area, please uh, check out uh, Cam's uh, catering company. And, um, and I know, um, and and you want to set, tell us a little bit about your catering company, Cam? Uh, yeah, so we specialize in southern hospitality cooking, just that down home, great southern food. Uh, we do everything from small parties to weddings to birthday parties, um, baby showers. Um, we cater to everybody's needs is what we tell everybody. So what, whatever you want is what you get. We don't have a set menu from you for you you to choose from whatever you desire is what we're going to make happen so that's what we do awesome so y'all come check us out awesome awesome thank you cameron thank you desiree good luck to you congratulations desiree you. <laughs> uh what's your contact information um i can if people want more information about your catering company yes lauren t wants email. to know what's your contact information they can find us on facebook on the triple c cam's catering company they can also find us on Instagram at cams underscore catering underscore company. Um, and they can also uh, email me directly at c.greensr3 at gmail.com. All right. Desiree, what are you doing with the company? She can't <laughs> cook. <laughs> she can't cook. She's just going to be the pretty face service. <laughs> it's a girl okay it's okay girl it, get, let your man cook for you <laughs> let your man cook for right. you it's okay <laughs> Desiree thank you so much for agreeing to the interview Cam thank you so much for doing this again I would love to have you guys back on we, we can have another um, a, a better internet connection because I really want to get some more advice that you may have for people that are dating online good luck to you God bless and happy holidays happy holidays all right. Thank you so much. That's Cam and uh, Desiree there in North Carolina. We're doing a series of interviews about uh, people having success dating online, because as I said, um, single people are the largest population, more than married people. And there are a lot of people not only having challenges dating, particularly due to COVID, but they're having challenges dating online. Here's the other thing that uh, I find fascinating is during COVID, a lot of people are getting married. That's right. They're figuring out, hey, life is unpredictable. Let me go ahead and do this. So there is hope for you, single man. There is hope for you, single woman, if you do want a uh, great and a meaningful relationship. And Cam and Desiree have proven just that. If you have a story or a issue that could help someone cope with COVID, please go to the TaylorMade Productions page and uh, inbox me. I would love to tell your story on the show. If you have a product or service that could help someone cope with COVID, please email copingwithtraytaylor at gmail.com. And we would love for you to be a proud sponsor, just like SCD Heck, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, and it's together the Diabetes Advisory Council of South Carolina, uh, Palmetto Media Connections, and Agape Counseling and Training Center. Uh, coming up next week, we're going to talk with Rosalind Goodman. She is with the uh, South Carolina Hospital Association. She's going to tell us about ACA, the Affordable Care Act enrollment. It's time to enroll for your insurance. And also Faith Friday with John Lakin. And of course, Wellness Wednesday 
with In It Together and the Diabetes Advisory Council. As always, I leave you with a reading from Jesus Calling. I wanted Cam to uh, uh, close us out in prayer, but like I said, the uh, this connection was getting so bad. I know you guys were having a problem hearing. Um, well, I'm in August. It's not August, November. <laughs> it's November 28th. And Jesus says this to us today. Rest in the deep assurance of my unfailing love. Let your body, mind, and spirit relax in my presence. Release into my care anything that is troubling you so you can focus your full attention on me. Be awed by the vast dimensions of my love for you, wilder, longer, higher, and deeper than anything you ever know. Rejoice that the marvelous love I have for you, Jesus says, is yours forever. The best response to this glorious gift is a life seeped in thankfulness. Every time you thank me, you acknowledge that I am your Lord and provider. This is the proper stance for a child of God. And watch to see how much I bless you when you bring me the sacrifice of gratitude. That's your Jesus calling for today. Saturday, November 28th. I'm Trey Taylor. Until the next time, I wish you peace and abundant blessings. Have a great holiday. Have a great weekend. And don't forget to wear your mask over your nose and under your chin. Take care. Coping with COVID is brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Visit scdheck.gov for an updated list of testing sites and important information on how to protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. Also, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Log on to columbiasc.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Center. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their life. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, contact Agape Counseling and Training Center at agapects.com and Columbia Housing Authority. The agency is looking for stories from former residents of Allen Benedict Court to retain some of the property's rich history. In its 80-year life, Allen Benedict Benedict Court has been home to some of the country's elite, including a Grammy Award-winning performer, corporate executives, national television celebrities, a host of doctors, lawyers, and NBA greats. So share your pictures, mementos, and memories at chcares at chasc.org. Coping with COVID, brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Columbia Housing Authority, Agape Counseling and Training Center, and Palmetto. Meadow Media Connection. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor.